Hello guys, welcome to another video from my YouTube channel that is Biology at your fingertips and today I am going to tell you a trick to remember the pituitary gland and the hormones that are secreted by pituitary gland. So let's get started. Before that, we have to clarify our concepts on hormones as well as some glands. So I am going to tell you the basics about it. The first hormone that is ever discovered by a scientist which is secretin. You have to remember that the first hormone uh, you know discovered was secretin which is discovered by two scientists Bayliss and Starling. So the first hormone secreted is secretin which is secreted by Bayliss and Starling and Starling was the one who gave term hormones. So he gave term hormones. So Bayliss and Starling discovered secretin and Starling gave term hormone. The study of different type of glands, endocrine glands and the hormones secreted by them as well as the action of these particular hormones is studied under a branch of biology that is known as endocrinology. That is very important and the father of endocrinology is T. Addison. You have to memorize that T. Addison. After that we have heard that insects secrete some kind of chemicals, some chemical messengers to attract the organism of the same species but of different sex. For example, male secrete to attract female. That particular hormones which stimulate sex in those particular organisms are known as pheromones. So this is the basics about hormones. After that we uh, just came to our topic, pituitary gland which is also known as master gland of our body. Pituitary gland is also known as master gland of our body which is situated in cella tersica of sphenoid bone. You have to memorize that. Pituitary gland which is the master gland of our body is situated in cella tersica of sphenoid bone. It is differentiated or it is divided into two parts that is adenohypophysis, anterior pituitary. Second one is neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary which secrete different kind of hormones and we have to memorize those hormones as well as their functions which can be asked in any competitive examinations in which biological sciences is a part because this is a very important topic from the examination point of view. So firstly we will study about neurohypophysis because this is a very uh, small topic. So neurohypophysis stores and secretes only two hormones. Why it is called stores and secretes because it do not synthesize those hormones. These hormones are synthesized by hypothalamus but stored and secreted by neurohypophysis so are studied under neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary. These two hormones are oxytocin. Oxytocin is the hormone which stimulates milk ejection from the mammary gland of female as well as help in parturition because it is very useful in uterine contraction. So what is the function of oxytocin? Oxytocin is helpful in milk ejection as well as the uterine contraction during parturition. After that, the second hormone was ADH that is antidiuretic hormone. ADH antidiuretic hormone which is also known as vasopressin. What is the function of this particular hormone? That it increases the blood volume. How does it increase the blood volume? Because it increases the reabsorption of water, water content from DCT that is the distal convoluted tubule of Henle's loop. So the blood volume is increased because of the reabsorption of water from DCT of Henle's loop. And when the concentration of ADH decreases, it causes diabetes insipidus, which is due to increase in urine volume. So the lesser concentration of ADH, ADH will lead to diabetes insipidus and which is due to the increase in urine volume. So this is all about neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary. Now we come to adenohypophysis or anterior pituitary which secretes some sort of hormones which are glycoproteinaceous in nature. Glycoproteinaceous, the name simply indicates that these are the protein, protein molecules which are conjugated with some sort of glycomolecules. Glyco simply means saccharides which are uh, maybe conjugated with disaccharides or polysaccharides. So these all hormones are glycoproteinaceous in nature and the simple trick to memorize these hormones is PMT flag. Nothing can be much simpler than this. PMT flag is the most simplest type of trick. P simply means prolactin, M for MSH, T for TSH, F for FSH, 
एल फॉर एल एच ए फॉर ए सी टी एच एंड जी फॉर जी एच द फुल फॉर्म्स ऑफ दीज हॉर्मोन्स आर प्रोलेक्टिन फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट प्रोलेक्टिन दैट एज द नेम इंडिकेट्स प्रोलेक्टिन लैक्टिन मीन्स सिंपली लैक्टोज विच इज प्रेजेंट इन मिल्क विच इज फॉर्म बाय द कम्बिनेशन ऑफ ग्लूकोज एंड गैलेक्टोज सो द प्रोलेक्टिन विल इंक्रीज द इनिशिएशन एंड मेंटेनेंस ऑफ मिल्क सिक्रेशन इट विल इनिशिएट एज वेल एज maintain the secretion of milk from mammary gland of female so this is about prolactin this starts from p am simply means msh that is melatonin secreting hormone melatonin stimulating hormone so it is secreted by pars intermedia which is responsible for pigmentation in our skin but in humans this is a vestigial hormone this point is very important that which uh, it can be asked like which of the following hormone is vestigial in humans so the answer would be msh and for our pars intermedia we will discuss uh, discuss sometime later the tsh that is thyroid stimulating hormone simply as the name indicates it will increase the thyroid secretion nothing else fsh is the follicle stimulating hormone it has a function in male that is spermatogenesis which is very important for sperm production and in females it is important for development of follicles so this is about fsh lh is a very important hormone which has a very important function in males lh is also known as ichs in males which simply means interstitial self stimulating hormone which helps in secretion of testosterone which is the male sex hormone in female it has two functions one is ovulation that is the release of ovum and the second one is the maintenance or the maintenance of corpus luteum simply the maintenance of corpus luteum so it has two function in females ovulation and maintenance of corpus luteum acth adenocorticotropic hormone so it will increase the synthesis of adren adrenal cortex hormones as the name simply indicates so we don't have to memorize that some of the hormones were acting as the name indicates so these are very simple growth hormone as the name indicate again it is responsible for the normal growth of a particular person if it shows deviation it cause two type of disease one is acromegaly acromegaly is caused in adults so it is caused in adults so it will be taking place after epiphyseal closure after epiphyseal closure acromegaly will be taking place in adult and gigantism is taking place in children as it is taking place in children so this would be taking place before epiphyseal closure before epiphyseal closure so these are the two diseases which are related to growth hormone in both of these diseases the size of limbs get enlarged so this is about adenine hypophysis anterior pituitary neuro hypophysis and posterior pituitary now let us take a brief overview that what kind of structure does pituitary gland have it has somewhat like this structure this is pars distalis which is the anterior pituitary or adeno hypophysis it is also known as pars distalis this one is the posterior pituitary which is known as pars nervosa and this is pars intermedia and as we can note that this pars intermedia secretes msh but as this pars intermedia get fused with pars distalis so we consider msh in adeno hypophysis because pars intermedia and pars distalis are somewhat fused so this is all about pituitary gland i hope you like my trick and i hope that you like my lecture and if you like it press like button i am aiming approximately 7 likes not more than that and if you really like my video then share it with your friends and thank you so much for watching this videos if you are new just subscribe to my channel thank you so much again guys